morning and we are finally here at our location we rested and now we are going to explore the hippo sanctuary guess the ride we are going with this man this is the ride we are going to sit on to the hippo place yeah i know right <laughs> I'm already excited for the adventure and oh, oh my goodness, <laughs> oh my goodness. I'll share you all the experiences. Look at them. Yay! Look at them. Yeah. <laughs> we have, um, let me say, three different zones. From here, the blue or whatever you call it. Yes. Is the Blackwater River running down? So we are here in Wichau mm -hmm. to go and see the hippos. We have um, different spots you can go. You can go from Wichau to Kantu, which is about four or five kilometers. To the boat station you okay. can see the hippos from yeah. Wichau to Pamfa to the boat station you can see hippos okay. and then watch out down Tokale to Talawana we have another station over yeah. there um, okay. that's way this way in, yeah. okay. so you go like this uh, okay. They just send you straight to the No, road. I mean... So this is the life jacket we will be putting on. And then this is what we'll be using to spot the hippos. I know. Like. Many minutes will we spend on the water? Uh, Depends on how. Usually we, we use an hour. Average. An hour. Okay. Here we go. All set and ready to explore. And uh, I'm already excited. Super, super excited. Chase. I just took a picture. <laughs> Wechow. Wechow means we chop. Mm -hmm. The first people to settle in Wechow town moved from the Gumba land. Uh, obviously, long, long ago, they used to be disputed over women and land issues. So, those in the Gumba land or the people who migrated from that place and settled in Wechow, they decided to relocate. So when they were coming and they go to Wichau, the leader asked them to stop because he foresaw that that place was a nice place for living. But the place was very like a, a forest, very bushy and full of wild animals. In order to clear the place for a very peaceful or safe living, he just asked them to start clearing the place that they want to settle. So that's how they came by the name Wichau. The we is just like the English we we all know so many people then the chow in our language means is to cut clear or cut something or chop something nice. so weed yeah. and then weed cut chow weed so chow weed chow weed chow but the spelling is cut. different huh. and, then and then the spelling the we is the same now. thing we like the English we so we chow is spelled w e c h i a u i a u okay we chow okay thank you welcome so we are descending right over there as a rider. There's the boat. Yo, uh. the rock here as you can. 
Are you seeing them? Why you don't have food? Oh, you have some at the board. Established by the chiefs and opinion leaders. Our main aim is to conserve the fauna and the flora, that is the plants and the animals, market it to the rest of the world or other regions as an eco tourism site. Those of you who have been to Mali, we are doing, or we have some kind of similarities and we have some kind of disparities as well. The similarities being that we all do our activities all in the name of conservation to see how. Natural resources like plants and plants can be protected for and born in this place. We are not yet trying to come around. And our disparity here is that Muli Park is being run by government, that's why it's called a national park. The sustainability lies in the hands. The issue is that now let me go deep into the history about the sanctuary. Like I said, that is a man who discovered them when he started. It was lack of funds to enable him to buy fishing logistics, particularly net. He went to a women group over here every market day they set or a day after a market day. He contribute money, lock it inside a box. If anybody wants in the form of loan, they'll give it to you. Some of them they keep the money for six months before they open a share. Some of them one year. Within that time you can pick it for loan. Then they can just say every hundred Ghana for one month, they will say you should put additional have cities to rent as their interest so that when they add all this money to their principal when they are dividing it everybody can get something additional to what you might have perhaps yeah. contributed so this man went to them they gave him part of the money he went to fishing department to look for recommendation on to the kind of net that he should pursue they tell him the kind of net that he should buy he bought the net brought it to the water unfortunately on his part for the either west time, we came back to check whether the net had trapped some pieces. To his surprise, all the net were mutilated beyond recognition. Oh. So he was confused. How do I pay this loan back? How do I even explain? What am I going to do? Who will lend me the tongue, the language to go and convince these people that this calamity happened to me? He said he must know the cause of the damage to the net before he can send any distance. So he was on the river, day in the water, contacting his own local research. And he just came across hippos and they were damaging other people what to send uh. net. So he was the first gentleman to discover the hippos. In the 1980s? Yes. Nice. But because of sensitization, it took us 10 years or more than to be able to tell the people the need for conservation. That's why we started in 1998. We thank God we discovered it. the hippos and eat it. earlier than that. <laughs> The nose and in the eyes. Apart from that, their body is so exposed or naked. So they don't want to get their skin burned. That's the prime reason why they stay in the water for the whole day. When it comes to night, around 7 8 pm, they leave the water there on the lamp. That time, temperatures are so down. Mm -hmm. So that's how they do it. And they equally feed during night. So when they leave daytime and they are under water, they are grazing. They eat a lot. Averagely, they can chop grasses. The weight is around 40 kilometers. Wow. Sorry, 40 kilograms per night. That's how they can eat. And per every bite, the magnitude of grasses or feed that they can consume is 50 centimeters. That's how it is done. People, I can say, they don't have teenage pregnancy. At the age of nine, the females are ready to do the do, receive, give birth, and they also multiply. So that's how it is. What's this? Is this a trap? Yes, yes. Aside the fishing net, that's also another logistic we use to do fishing. For 270 days. Whoa! And they give birth every two years. That's the interval. So we started in 98 with only four hippos. But now, according to our 
hippo sense we are having averagely hippo uh, sort of 50 hippos wow 50. but they live in groups a group of hippos is called a school like the school that each and every one mm -hmm. of us attended so it depends on the group that we will meet ever since i've been here for the past 10 years the highest group i've ever come in contact they were 22 in number sometimes you can see one when you see one that one is an independent hippo it doesn't want to associate itself to any group because it, that one is always very much dangerous but that you can see two like what we saw at the entrance that was a female and a little one i'll give you a uh, this and there is a hippos when they give birth they're having the liberty to bring the children to the group that is if that offspring is a baby girl the grown ones they particularly the music they don't have problem they can support the mothers as far as nature is concerned to cater for them to also grow up but if the mother unfortunately give birth to a little hippo it is a boy <clears throat> it's a problem if it is brought to the group the grown males will kill it because they don't want it to grow up and they will be competition over the women ah. yeah uh -huh. it will can be it, it can just be like we are here, one, two, three, four. We have four men against three women. If they are hippos, we have to attack the younger one. It could be this one or the other guy at the back. We have to kill him so that the women can be, we can do our mapping so well, one to one. So that's how they normally do it. So I can conclude with the little one that we saw because I haven't seen it complete or holistically. But based on my experience, I can also say that the little one is likely to be a, a male. Mm. So that's how it is. Even at birth, or the fetus that the mother carry. Okay, we see the hippos. We are showing on the land. It is so beautiful. And we can make noise. Okay. So, yeah. They are looking at us. They saw on that one stick. Yeah. What happened? This one of the Probably the photo or something. The dry land that the hippos go on. Oh, okay. So, this is Burkina Faso. No more This is Burkina Faso? Even far deep. However, there are certain persons that are very sunny, less than two meters. So during the day, if they don't want to be polluting, they look for those places in order for them to get support with their feet on the ground. That's how they do it. So if they are sleeping, obviously the bigger ones leave their heads, the remaining one will come among their heads on them. However, here they have a lot of space, that's why you just see them. One of them behaving the way. Okay. We are climbing that to have a better view. It's so worth it. Yeah. 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 Was one of our. Oh, so houses. Yeah. We are about to have a good view. Please go one at a time. One at a time. One at a time. So that is Burkina Faso and you can see people are coming in from there to Ghana. Today is a market day and they are going to sell. Can you imagine? They moved all these on the boat. The little boy over there. And we are going right into Ghana to sell. How was your experience seeing the hippo? Finally ticked off my bucket list. I know. I can't believe it. I mean, I've been waiting to do this for ages. And now that it's done, I'm just like, Lord, Lord, the God loves me. And Ghana has just so much. So many beautiful things honestly, in Ghana. Honestly, you guys. You guys don't understand. Like, it's just 
the road is not bad so the road is not bad so guys take that trip take that flight book that flight fly to Wa. I mean when you fly to Wa, once you fly there you can just get a bus and come here and it's like four hours from Wa to this place four yeah we were four in or three when we were in Wa. Mm -hmm. When we were in Wa, we it's got the bus, which is like an hour and a bit. It was like an hour and a bit. Mm -hmm. And then the journey here was like 20 minutes. No, no, no. I, I mean like from... Accra. I, I'm using, no, I'm using um, Jirapa as a distance. So that place would take like two, three hours to... Because obviously, if you are not too familiar with places to sleep, mm -hmm. Jirapa is like the best place to, to go. To be fair, yeah. yes. So yes. once you sleep there, you can just take a two or three hour drive, come here. In fact, sleep here also, have a camping experience here. On the tree house. On the tree house. And then, perfect. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Please, you should wave. Yeah. Hi! We'll wave it to the drone. <laughs> Guys, I am so fulfilled. Kept three points. My reaction was priceless. Now to the hippo sanctuary. The exciting part is I am going to Burkina Faso. So even if I don't officially sleep in Burkina Faso, I have been to Burkina Faso. Besides, you all you do it. You transit in another country. You say you've been there. So me time transiting in another country today on a canoe. <laughs> I'm just super excited because this is Burkina Faso and I am going there. I'm going there. Let's go, let's go guys. <laughs> yes. Hi, let's sit down now. You know what? In as much as it's exciting, yeah, the excite, <laughs> I said excite. Stella was saying the stones, the rocks looks like a hippo, which is true. But anyways, I was, I'm saying that we are going to Burkina Faso, but that doesn't mean you should have it in mind to smuggle yourself here because here to the main border is a very to the main border is a very very long distance so don't try to think that you're going to cross the black vote into burkina faso no but i am doing that i'm transiting in burkina faso and i'm almost there <laughs> young guys this is a very young entrepreneur he is charging each individual that sits in the boat two cities but if you have a bike i told him to charge five cities <laughs> stella almost made us fall into the <laughs> so we are here now Sleep. all african countries are the same and i'm in burkina faso I have transited here finally, but I can't walk to the border. I just wanted to have a feel of the Burkina land. And here we are. Uh, yeah. So you see, this is the land. You walk here, and then you go into the town, which I am doing. Finally, <laughs> walking into Burkina Faso. Most dry lands here. The water is still there, so you can see I'm quite far from the place. <laughs> I'm actually going into Burkina Faso. There's not much to see here, so we won't go much further. Okay, so this is where I have to end it. Bye in Burkina Faso. Hopefully, someday I get to experience their full country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, watching her. Yo, yeah, best Yeah, that's just it. We are going back. Yeah, I didn't come today. Yeah, yeah back on the land. The footprints of the hippos. Very, very big. Look at that. So they are able to climb. Wow. Oh, we ended our trip here and now we are walking 
to our destination to where our car is. Oh, almost fell. Look at the pills. Let's be okay. Okay, so that's the one over there. 